So Donald Trump has been ordered to pay $83 million to E. Jean Carroll, and I have been laughing ever since the news broke. I was sitting in a traffic jam when it first broke, and I was laughing so hard that cars, five cars in front of me could hear me laughing. And I'm going to try to read his ridiculous post that he made on True Social in response to it. I'm going to try to read it without laughing out loud, but here it goes. He says, absolutely ridiculous. I fully disagree with both verdicts and will be appealing this whole Biden-directed witch hunt focused on me and the Republican Party. Well, first of all, it's not a Biden-directed witch hunt because this all started back in 2019 when Donald Trump was president. So this isn't a Biden witch hunt. All he's trying to do when he says that, he's trying to drag the Republican Party down with him, which he's doing a good job of doing. Then he goes on to say, our legal system is out of control and being used as a political weapon. That's funny coming from a guy who is sitting here debating on that he should have the right to unalive his political rivals and generals, that he should be allowed to lock people up for no reason whatsoever. That's, that's pretty funny that he would say that. And then he finishes up by saying, they have taken away all First Amendment rights. This is not America. So they've taken away all of his First Amendment rights. Well, he's not in jail for any of the things he said. And he has his own platform, and he's posting it on the internet, and we're all reading it. So how did he lose his First Amendment rights? Now, what this is, this is accountability finally coming to Donald Trump. And because he was a spoiled, pampered, rich brat whose daddy handed him everything in his life, he's never had to face anything like this, and this is how he's reacted. And what he's going to do is he's going to continue to drag the Republican Party down, and he's going to drag all of his followers right down with him because he's working his crowd now. He's not trying anymore. He's not even saying, if you'll pay attention, he's not even saying that he's not guilty anymore. He just goes on rants about how the system is broken, and he goes on rants and starts debating on why he should have immunity and he should be allowed to be a criminal. But I really believe that all of this shit you see with him and Alina Haba, I really believe that it's simply them trying to muddy the water as much as they possibly can and distort the argument so bad that they'll cause the other side to mess up and they can get a mistrial. That's what this is all about. Because if they were really innocent, then they would be prepared to prove it. But they've not been. They've dropped the ball every step of the way. They fumble. They drop the ball. Alina Hobb is one of the worst lawyers that any of us has ever seen. I have never been to law school a day in my life, but I have watched enough Matlock and Perry Mason episodes to know that you can't do certain things in certain ways. Alina Haba failed to meet deadlines. She continuously dropped the ball. They had to stop everything and explain to her when, where, why, and how she could do things. And I really believe at the end of the day, if she was anybody else's lawyer, she would have done been fired. But I think the reason that they're doing this is because they're not trying to actually prove their innocence. They're just trying to work the crowd. Just a few days ago, Alina Haba asked for a, for a delay in the proceedings, said that she had been exposed to COVID, that both of her parents tested uh, positive, and now she was feeling some of the symptoms, so could they please delay it? And then she goes to New Hampshire to his victory party, and she gets a picture taken with a guy named Dylan Quattrusi. I hope I'm saying that right. But she gets her picture took with him, smiling, looking fine. And the guy got kicked out of the event for it. And I always like to take this back to people like us, just everyday people. Imagine if you called into work on a Friday, said, I ain't going to be there, I'm feeling really sick. And then you went out to the bar all weekend and posted selfies. How do you think that would work out for you when you went back to work the next morning? How do you think you would fare in your world? But they're doing this stuff simply to muddy the water and to distort the argument so bad that their followers will just go with it because they're working that crowd. They go out there every time. This is ridiculous. This is an outrage. Our system is broken. We didn't have a chance to show the evidence. Yes, they did. We didn't have a chance to show the DNA. Yes, they did. They didn't. If you've actually been following the case, then you know that their act is bullshit. But if you're just somebody driving back and forth to work today, yeah, I heard they're trying to get Trump, man. They're, they're trying to bring him down. The whole system's weaponized against him. I heard his lawyer on there complaining, man. She's trying to tell him, man. I swear she's trying to tell him. No, if you was paying attention you would know that she's been dropping the ball this entire time. Now, I said she's one of the worst lawyers I've ever seen, but part of me thinks that that's what Trump wants her to do. Just, just screw up as much as possible, create the biggest distraction you can possibly create, and maybe we'll muddy, muddy the water enough to get out of this. Because what's so interesting is how 
in the middle of all these trials, he suddenly stopped saying, I'm not guilty, and he just focused on how he needed immunity, how that he should be allowed to do the things he does. So to all the people out there who thinks he's not guilty, if he truly wasn't guilty, he would want these trials to go forward. He would want them to be fast. He would want his lawyer to present the best defense. He would want them to meet all the deadlines, bring everything to the table that they needed to bring. And he wouldn't always try to blame it on someone else. But he knows if he uses the word Biden, you can put the word Biden in front of anything, especially where I live in this part of the world. All you got to do, if you get a bad McDouble in a drive through it's Biden McDouble and everybody around you will freak out. Yeah, man, ain't worth shit. Joe Biden is the boogeyman that Donald Trump and Hunter, they're the, they're the boogeyman that, that Donald Trump created to distract his followers from the fact that he's the true wolf in sheep's clothing. It's all a show. Donald Trump and Alita Haba is like a really bad 80s wrestling tag team. The cowardly heels that just keeps working the crowd and just keeps, keeps screaming and crying and working their audience just to put asses in the seats. That's all they're trying to do. They're just trying to keep their followers in line. And in that, in that sense, they're succeeding, but that's the only thing they're succeeding at. He has to pay $83 million. And he's not as rich as he claims he is. I don't care who you are. That kind of money stings. And it's good to see it. And I hope we see him face more accountability. And I hope for the day that he's no longer in the political theater. He's just a bad memory that we learn from and try to move forward. And I would love to just get back to, to talking politics the way we used to without having to talk about this spoiled, pampered, rich brat that never worked an honest day in his life. I'm so sick of seeing poor hillbillies in my part of the world worship a guy that wouldn't piss on them if they was dying. It's just one of the most, it's been one of the most disgusting times in American history. That I, I never thought I would ever live through this. I really thought people in my part of the world would be smarter and could see through it. Now, don't get me wrong. There is a whole lot more blue dots here in these red states than you would ever imagine. They just don't talk as loud because the other side is so loud and obnoxious waving their flags in every which direction that sometimes a lot of us can't get a word in edgewise, but we're trying and we're going to change that narrative. Not all of us are ignorant. Not all of us have a cardboard cutout standing at the end of our bed. So we'll make it. We'll, we'll get past all this bullshit and I can't wait till the day he's completely out of our arguments.